going on everybody? Mike McFarland here, the Lake Fork Fishing Guide. Gonna give you a big changing report here for August 23rd. August 23rd. Man, I don't recall, at least not in the 10 years I've been here, having as much rain in one night as we just did in the month of August. Um, usually July, August is very dry, but people must be praying and prayers have been answered. Um, first of all, Bob Seeley was about to cancel the Big Bass Splash due to low water conditions. Um, we literally got 10.1, 10.01 inches of rain in less than 24 hours. Unfortunately, it destroyed my driveway. I have a, about a $10,000 uh, chip seal driveway. 100 yard beautiful, was beautiful driveway with railroad ties and, and um, railroad ties floated across my property. Uh, they are a quarter mile downstream. Uh, they went into my pond and downstream, uh, washed away all the beautiful white rock. Um, I have three leaks in my roof. My pond filled, pond is max full and then some. Um, I have a trailer that's out on my property that was completely submerged over two feet underwater. It was epic. Um, I, I've never seen that much rainfall in my entire life in that short amount of time. Again, 10 inches of rain fell. Um, and so let's go to the massive change that just happened. On Sunday night, we were 39533. That's 7.6 feet below full pool. All that rain hit and just annihilated us Sunday night into Monday. And by Monday afternoon, we were 397.06, almost two feet in less than 24 hours, the lake has come up. By today, 397.45, the lake has come up more than two feet, okay? And still filling, slowed down now, but still filling. Um, the clarity, I put a star here, zero to one. The reason I put zero to one is down south by the dam, it's still got the one foot visibility. But up in the northern ends, and any single creek that you go look, it is muddy. It's dirty, zero. Um, water temperatures have cooled down to 80 to 84, depends on where you're at, and I assume they'll even be a little cooler in some places, um, considering that the weather hasn't even, we haven't been very hot, been 70s and, and low 80s. Uh, but what a change, what a change overnight. And, and here's the thing, this, this is a blessing and a half, because it does several things. If you follow me regularly, you know that I've made a post about the thermocline and the turnover that's to come. This nullifies our fall turnover. Uh, and let me rephrase that. The fall turnover will still happen. Um, it's really it broken right now. Everything is all, the, the flooding just changes everything. So we are not potentially going to see any of the real bad yellow bubble, methane gas, nasty water, bad oxygenated water. This just changed everything. Um, Mother Nature is unique, but that bombing of water re-blends everything. Um, it, it, it really will be different. And here's the thing, here's the tip, here's, here's the coolest part. Rising water rises fish, okay? Remember that. When the water rises, the fish go with it. They go up, they go to the banks. So with two full feet level, it's time to break out the frogs. It's time to break out the buzz baits. It's time to break out the spinner baits and the chatter baits and the underspins. And those fish are going to be shallow, shallow, shallow. They're going to be up in that grass and cover and, and fresh green growth that was there, that was dry for so long. It's now in the water, a lot of it. So it's going to be difficult sometimes to find fish. You just need to drop your trolling motor and cover water. Um, start on a main lake point and go. And when you start getting some bites, find a 100-yard stretch or so that you can go back and forth on because once you've found some or one, you're going to be on fish, okay? Uh, but it's a shallow deal now. Guaranteed, what a change, what a blessing. Um, with the exception of the flooding of Dallas, where a lot of people, I think people died. Um, I think there was a lot of stranded people. Um, Dallas really flooded bad, and, and a lot of areas did. We had a lot of damage here on Fork, um, so I feel for all of those. I've got insurance, so insurance will take care of my property, no problem. The three leaks in my house uh, weren't so bad, both bathrooms and the kitchen. Uh, and, uh, and it was really more on the fart fans and the, and the vent fans. So I don't think I have roof damage, but I just think I have some, some leaking around some vents and things like that. And with that heavy of water, hey, to be expected. Um, so 
Really, really cool chain of events. It, it turned the tables real fast, guys. So uh, I'm going to be uh, fishing here at the end of the week, and I will give you another rundown on Thursday um, as I really get back into fishing heavy now, because I will be now a lot. Um, we'll kind of fatten up your report, the public report. I, I know that I don't tell you guys the rule of three, and I know that I don't tell you the baits a lot as much as I as you would like me to. Um, of course, I'm always trying to drive you to the members only channel. Um, in the members only, we give the rule of three, which is the areas that I'm catching fish on by rule of three. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you need to subscribe. Um, but it, it's it's different than waypoints. Rather than putting you on waypoints, I put you in, in areas. Um, it's a two number system. The rule of three is used by the elite anglers. It's used by MLF anglers to share with their buddies to help really kind of teams and, and other guys that are your friends get in the right area. Um, so they always say that 90% of the fish use 10% of the lake. And so that's what the rule of three is doing. The rule of three is, is, not, is, is kind of just putting it into zones. And, and I, I tell you those zone numbers and where you should be. Uh, the second with the members only is, is I spill my guts on exactly what we're catching the fish on. Right now, I haven't been fishing since it's flood. So I suspect a buzzbait bite is going to be number, the number one thing I go looking for. A buzzbait bite and a frog bite. Uh, I'm going to be throwing natural frogs. I'm going to be throwing white buzzbaits. I'm also going to be throwing obnoxious noise clacking buzzbaits. They're easy to locate in the dirty, dirty water. I believe big Florida string bass don't like the noise. They're, they're territorial type fish. Um, so the noisy clacking type buzzbaits will also be something that I choose to use. I also will be using UV trailers, okay? Uh, dirty, dirty water, UV, the sun penetration, these are gonna be more visible to the fish. So the UV type trailers are also gonna be really important. Um, but guys, that's really the public rundown for you. I'll be back on Thursday, give you another, Thursday, Thursday, Friday. I may wait till Friday, because I think I'm gonna fish Friday morning, and I can give you a little more information if we wait till Friday afternoon to do another rundown this week. And I'll try and share some baits with you then. Um, but listen, if you really are really, really wanting to know dire straits, what's on my mind, a little more about the lake, a little more detail by rule of three and what exactly baits, what colors, what techniques are working, subscribe to the Members Only channel. It's $4.95 a month. Can't beat it. I think it's $4.99. Um, man, it's a really cool deal for the entire month, $4.99. I'm inviting you to personally go subscribe. If you don't like one month, then unsubscribe at the end of the month. It's no harm, no foul, okay? Um, other than that, it's kind of the gist of the rundown. Life is good. My Skeeter boat's back, by the way. It is tight. It went back to the Skeeter factory. It's for sale now. If anybody's interested, want to hit me up. My new one is being built in December. We'll be ready in January. Um, the 2023 boat will be built in December and here in January. So if you're looking to buy my 2022, get a contract with me now. It just came back from the Skeeter factory. And man, I'm telling you what, that first run the other day in it felt like brand spanking new. Man, they tightened that thing up from end to end, cleaned it up, fixed the minor little things and the stuff that I had done to it. I put it to work or, you know, I did put 200 hours on it. Uh, but very nice to be able to send it back to the factory for the tight refurbishing that they did to it. Thank you, Austin. Um, and the Skeeter team. Uh, other than that, guys, hit the thumbs up if you enjoy it. Comment below. Watch for Thursday, Friday's rundown. And uh, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for subscribing to my public channel. Tell all your friends about it.